Welcome to VKS Coding. So in this video, we'll talk about caching. So before getting to know about caching, let's first understand the problem and what caching is going to solve it. Suppose we have an e-commerce website and that is uh, running on some web server and all the data related to that website, it is stored in the database server. And within the database server, it is having storage devices like SSD or hard disk drives. So let's first understand what is the problem statement. Suppose we are running some offer and heavy discount in our e-commerce website for various product. Kind of an offer we wanted to show is like a different type of shirt, different type of jeans, whatever the electronics item, mobile, gadget, saris, watch, everything we wanted to show in the dashboard with the discounts, right? So how it will happen? So when the user requests through the browser, suppose a vkscoding.com is a e-commerce website, then the first request will come to the web server then web server will query data from the database server and within the database server these information related to shirt, jeans, wallet, watch, these are residing in different tables. One, two, three. So web server will query to the database server and gather the information about all the details about the shirt, jeans, wallet, watch, everything. And those details are residing into the different tables. So collecting those details and returning back from database server to the web server, it is taking a response of 10 seconds. And after that, once the web server got the details from the database server, it will return the respond to the browser so after 10 second response will be returned to the browser till this 10 second what is happening the browser is in kind of a loading state right so this is the actual problem because if you want to display the list data that is kind of a fan retrieve the data very quickly but if you have a large volume of data that you wanted to return and you wanted to return to the website that time it can take a time right so this is the actual problem so the user uh, request uh, first time it is taking 10 second and even again the user requesting the second time it is uh, taking 10 second and for suppose uh, billions of users right billions of users from various places using this website for all of them it is taking 10 seconds it's kind of a bad user experience right so how can we improve and what could be the solutions for this problem so to solve this problem we have to use caching let's see how the caching will help us to solve this problem in caching here what we do in cache whatever the frequently accessed data we can keep it into the cache and when we say cache it means we store the data into the ram and ram is faster and expensive compared to ssd and hard disk drive so we keep the data for all this offer related to the discount which we have to display in the dashboard will keep into the cache itself so whenever the user requests from the browser it comes to the web server first then web servers will request to the cache first if the cache having the data it will not query to the db server it will return the data from the cache itself and the response will be returned in kind of a 0.1 millisecond it will be applicable to all 1 billion user or 10 billion user who is using our e-commerce website right so for all of them it will be kind of a improved system performance and we don't have to call the DB so it will reduce the database call as well and latency will also be reduced because we are getting the response from the cache itself we don't have to hit the database and it will increase the read performance so whenever the read request comes we will directly return from the cache right and uh, in the cache the data will be stored in the RAM but it will be stored for a temporary it is not stored for a permanent because it's a kind of a volatile memory once you reboot the machine whatever the data is stored into their cache it can go off data can be lost so that's why we used a permanent storage in the db server via for ssd and hard disk drive we got to know how the caching will help to solve our problem so now let's see further how the caching works he here we have a browser and here we have a web server and here we have a database and here we have a cache so all are the components are in place so suppose we are getting the request from the browser request one we get from the browser then the uh, web server will receive the request from the browser and it will first check the requested data is present into the cache or not if the requested data present into the cache then it will return that data from the cache itself to the web server and this is nothing called cache hit the data present into the cache and the data return from the cache without the database call is called cache hit suppose if the next request is coming request 2 and the requested data is not present into the cache then we have to query the database from the web server and then we have to update the cache and then we have to return the response to the web browser 
right? So this is nothing called a cache miss. Why we called is a cache miss because the data is not present into the cache, right? So this is called nothing but is cache mesh. This cache is having the uh, 10 GB of uh, RAM, right? Whenever the data is not present into the cache, we are updating the data into the cache very frequently, right? So suppose this 10 GB is full. Now the requested data is again not present into the cache, but our cache is full. So how can we update the more data, newer data into the cache? To overcome this problem, we have to go for eviction policies. It means we have to remove some data from the cache to make a, a available space for the new data, right? And we have a different type of eviction policies like LRU least recently used or least frequently used most recently used or FIFO first in first out so we have a different kind of eviction policies using that we can remove the data from the cache and make the available space for the new data and to updating the data cache while reading or writing we have a different kind of strategies as well so regarding those things i'll discuss on the future videos let's talk about more on the different types of caching what are the types of caching we have so let's talk about the first type of caching that is nothing but the browser caching so whenever the browser request uh, to the website right first time so what the browser will do browser will load the some html or images or javascript in its cache so whenever the user requests the second time so it will load it from the cache itself it will not hit the web server whenever the web browser store the data into the cache that time it will put some expiry as well like expiry for 30 seconds so till 30 seconds if that same data is requested from the website the data will be read from the cache once the expiry is expired that particular data then again it will retrieve from the website and store into the cache so this is how the browser will frequently load the website data right so that's how it works so second type we have is a web server caching so in web server caching there will be cache is getting used in the backend side so there can be a key value store like redis we can use it here so whenever the browser requests to the web server first then web server will check the data it is present into the cache or not then if the data is present into the cache then it will retrieve the data from the cache and return to the browser and if the data is not present into the cache then web server has to read the data from the database and then it has to update to the cache and then it has to return the uh, back the data to the browser so that's how the web server caching works this caching in web server technique we can use for redis memcache those are kind of a key value store that can be used here so this is kind of a second category so third type we have a content delivery network so basically content delivery network is used to improve the delivery speed of the static content like images videos web pages and any multimedia contents like that so whenever the browser requests to the uh, any website and that is connected to c CDN, right then the CDN will uh, receive that request and that will query the original database and it will get the particular audio video whatever the content is requested and it will copy that particular content in the CDN itself and it will return to the browser so whenever the content is requested from the second time to the CDN so CDN will not query to the database it will return from the CDN itself so this is the way it will improve the performance and it will reduce the latency so for CDN we can use Akamai and the Amazon CloudFront so we have other option as well for CDN so next we have a distributed caching so why we need a distributed caching suppose there is a single cache here right so it is limited to a single RAM right in this machine and if we have a scaled out database and we want it to scale our caching as well because we are dealing with the high volume data throughputs right so in that case in distributed caching basically the memory can be scaled out by linking the multiple machines right so we have a cache 1 cache 2 cache 3 we can link it together and make it as a distributed cache so in the each cache server it maintain the one portion of the cache data right and when the request come for the data then the particular request will be redirected to the appropriate caching server right if the browser requests some data then it will come first to the application server then it will use some hashing algorithm and then it will transfer the request to the caching server 
to return the data so what are the benefits we'll get it will definitely give the fast response time easily can be scalable we can add as many as server we want into the caching layer and even in the database layer we can independently scale both the caching and the database as well and it is highly available also and fault tolerant if one of the cache server go we can still serve the data from the another cache server if you make a replica in the caching server itself so this is how the distributed caching will work so this is all about the caching so i hope you like the video please do subscribe my channel to get to know more about the system design topics